look at this. Photos of Wallowitz family before father left forever. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 saddest The Big Bang Theory moments. No, I'm not calm. You really hurt me. That wasn't my intention. It doesn't matter what you intended. What matters is the way you made me feel. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable times the usually cheerful show made us cry. But at least tear up a little. Plot points will be discussed, so consider this your spoiler alert. Your comments always cheer us up, so leave one below and let us know what you think. Number 20, Stuart showed up. As much as Stuart was part of the group, and at one point he and Raj became really good friends, he often felt like he was on the outside looking in. Hey, thanks for letting me use the comic book store as part of the scavenger hunt. Oh, my pleasure. Always happy to help out with fun things that I wasn't invited to be a part of. And while we'd like to tell you that he was wrong and was just projecting his own fears and neuroses on the group, we can't. Sure, we can understand that a lot can happen in two decades, but when the gang all agreed to reunite for a meal 20 years in the future, Stuart was the only one who followed through. We can only assume that the rest of them were sitting around some futuristic coffee table eating dinner, and totally forgot about their former friend. See you guys in 20 years. I know it. Number 19, Green Lantern had to watch Wonder Woman and Superman. Winning the New Year's Eve costume contest at the comic book store should have been a really happy moment for Leonard. And it was, at first. The guy's decision to get Penny to be Wonder Woman and her then boyfriend Zack to be Superman had paid off in victory. But then the countdown happened, midnight struck, and Leonard had to stand there and watch Penny and Zack kiss. <laughs> What made it even sadder was that Penny had her eyes on Leonard throughout. This gesture felt like acknowledging that she still had feelings for him, even though she was embracing Zack. If Zack and I had just gone to a regular club or a party, it would have been fine. But this, with the costumes and you... What about me? Nothing. Number 18, I wish you weren't going. In the season two finale, Sheldon and the guys prepared to head off to the North Pole for a few months. Sorry, I was gonna tell you. Oh, hey, no, you don't have to apologize. There's no reason you have to tell me. I was just, you know, surprised. After Penny found out Leonard was leaving, she notably got him a gift and gave him an extra lengthy hug. This act confused Leonard, who had feelings for his neighbor. However, when he questioned her about her motives, she denied that her gestures and words meant anything. Yet when he left and she was alone in her apartment, she finally privately voiced her true feelings, breaking us. Bye. Okay, bye. It means I wish you weren't going. If she had just told Leonard the truth, we could have all had a happy cry. But instead, the moment was just a tragic one. Number 17, Sheldon feeling left out. We may not all be geniuses, but that doesn't mean we can't relate to a lot of what the guys, Amy and Bernadette, go through. In this case, it was Sheldon's feelings that hit us right in our hearts. When Dr. Cooper didn't get invited to an exclusive physics symposium, his feelings were hurt. A select group of scientists was invited to a weekend symposium at a former home of Richard Feynman, and I wasn't included. Sheldon, I'm sure it's not because I don't think you're an elite scientist. No one ever likes to be left out especially when the thing you're being left out of involves your peer group. Sure, many of us can't relate to the whole physics symposium thing, but being excluded is something we've all dealt with at one time or another. Do you think there comes a point in life when it stops feeling bad to be left out of things? Probably not. It's an evolutionary advantage to be included in group activities. It's this relatability that really made the ordeal difficult to watch. Until Sheldon and Amy built Fort Cozy McBlanket, of course. The first annual Best Fort Ever Contest, or Fort Off Art. <laughs> Fort Knox, Fort Ticonderoga, Fort Sumter, and Fort Cozy McBlanket. <laughs> Number 16, Priya cheated on Leonard. Allow us to start by saying that, yes, we know Leonard also cheated on Priya when he repeatedly made out with Alice, the girl from the comic book store. 
I thought for once I'd met a good guy, but you're just another jackass. Oh, no, no, you have it wrong. No, I, I was going to be a jackass, but I stopped myself. However, with that being said, we also recognize that he ultimately stopped it from going any further than that, walking away because he felt bad about what he was doing. So when he found out that Priya did a whole lot more than just make out with someone, he was blindsided. I kind of cheated on you too. I kind of? A couple of weeks ago, I slept with my ex-boyfriend. And his pain over the dissolution of their relationship was real. Regardless of how you felt about Leonard and Priya as a couple, there's no doubt that they cared for each other. And seeing it end like that was unfortunate. Well, it's not a competition. Oh, yeah, it is, and you won. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have to go. Number 15, Penny cut from NCIS. To call Penny a struggling actress is almost an understatement. Before she switched career paths, her only noteworthy gigs, besides some small stage productions, were a hemorrhoid commercial and the low-budget, low-quality serial apist movies. Oh, after I did it, I felt so ashamed. Thankfully, that thing never came out. Oh, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, with serial apist. <gasps> So when she got a small part on an episode of the big network television show NCIS in season 7, we couldn't have been happier for her. That also meant that when she found out her scene was removed from the episode, we felt her pain and devastation. It was even worse because she was watching with all her friends in excited anticipation. I'm, I'm sorry. That stinks. Sure you agreed? This doesn't make any sense to me. I, I, th I thought I did a really good job. I Excuse me. We still haven't fully recovered from this one. Number 14, why Sheldon knocks three times. Throughout the series, Sheldon's compulsion to always knock three times was a source of many funny moments. Who do we love? Penny. Who do we love? Penny. Who do we love? Penny. Hello, Sheldon. Come on in. However, the origin of the obsession and the reason why he did it is anything but funny, as he explained to Penny in season 10. During a heart-to-heart -heart with her, he opened up about how, as a teen, he had walked in on his dad with a woman who was not his mum. I saw my father having relations with another woman. Oh, that's awful. I know. It's also why I never open a door without knocking three times. That's something no kid should ever have to see. He told the story in order to explain why he was being difficult when it came to compromising with Amy. But in doing so, he also mentioned that it fueled the reasoning behind his triple knocks, tugging at our heartstrings in the process. Number 13, Sheldon and Amy's theory debunked. One of the happiest moments of the show was when Sheldon and Amy won the Nobel Prize. However, in the lead up to that happiest of moments, the story took a few major detours in sadness. One such detour was the apparent disproving of their theory by a Russian paper from the 1970s. Well, Raj and I were chasing them down like you asked us to, and um, we came ac across a, a Russian paper that seems to disprove super asymmetry. Seeing the shock in their eyes was sad enough, and Sheldon demolishing the whiteboard just added to it. But the primal scream he let out after is when the devastation of the moment really hit the highest and most gutting of notes. Although it did make the joy that much greater when their theory was ultimately proved right. Number 12, Howard refuses to read the letter from his father. Two of the defining aspects of Howard's character were the fact that he lived with his mother and that his father abandoned the family when he was young. Why did you read it? Maybe he apologizes or explains why he left. He abandoned me and my mother. Why does he deserve a chance to explain anything? While he was often ragged on for the former, it was the latter that was sad. We always knew it had affected him, but it wasn't until Sheldon uncovered a letter from his dad, sent for his 18th birthday, that we fully appreciated the hurt Howard was carrying. He never opened it, actually opting to burn it in this episode. The group eventually came up with a clever way to share its message with him, but his not wanting to definitively know what it said showed the depth of the agony he felt. We felt it too. Actually, I don't want to know. 
I want all of them to be true. Well, one of them is. That's pretty cool. Number 11, Sheldon's Pop Pop. What started off as a fun Christmas-themed game of Dungeons and Dragons ends with one of the saddest moments of the series. I get right up in Santa's big fat face and say, well, 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 jolly old Saint Nick, we meet again. Yeah, I believe the last time we spoke was in the Baybrook Mall in Galveston, Texas, when I was five years old. Isn't that right? In this scene, we learn why Sheldon has such disdain for the Christmas season, and more specifically, jolly old Saint Nick. And my mother dragged me there, and she popped me down in your lap, and you asked me what I wanted for Christmas. And I told you my pop-pop, because that was the year my grandfather died. I missed him, and I wanted him back. Sheldon reveals that his grandfather was the only person in his family that encouraged him to pursue science when he was a kid, and that when his pop-pop passed away, he asked Santa to bring him back, which of course didn't happen. Pop-pop was the only one in my family who encouraged me to pursue science, but you didn't bring him back, did you? No, instead I got Lincoln Logs. Now, you can build a lot of neat things out of Lincoln Logs. But Pop-Up ain't one of them. It's a funny scene, but it's underlaid with real emotional sadness. Number 10, Lucy breaks up with Raj. Although Raj seems to fall in love with pretty much any girl that looked his way, Lucy was the first girl he was probably truly in love with. I like you a lot, and that's scary for me. Uh, mostly because you're a proven flight risk. Given her intense social anxiety, Raj had to work extra hard to get her to trust him and keep her from climbing out the nearest bathroom window. And he did. He was very understanding of her issues. He set up super romantic texting dates and he was quick to apologize when he would push her too far out of her comfort zone. Oh no. Buddy, okay? But it wasn't enough. In the season six finale, Lucy agreed to meet the gang, but in the end, it was too much for her. And she broke up with Raj, through text. Raj, I can't come to the party. This is all just too much for me. I don't think we should see each other anymore. Sorry, Lucy. Number nine, Sheldon says no to Amy. From the moment that Amy ended her relationship with Sheldon, fans were waiting for Shamie to get back together. I was thinking that um, maybe I'm ready to be your girlfriend again. Needing a break from Sheldon was understandable, but these two were meant to be together. And most of us probably assumed that when Amy was ready to get back together, Sheldon would be too. Amy, I excel at many things but getting over you wasn't one of them. But alas, no. And it wasn't just the no that was sad. His honest reasoning about how hard it was for him to get over her is something that so many of us can relate to from both perspectives. I think I need to just be your friend. Okay, I understand. Number eight, The Last Supper. As anyone who's ever lost someone knows, it isn't just sad when it happens. There are also moments that come along afterwards that bring back memories, and in doing so, bring the grief back up to the surface. Ma always kept it on hand in case I got sick. She thought she could cure anything with her cooking. That's exactly what happened to Howard after his mum died when the power went out at her house. Stuart was residing there at the time and told Howard that it had been out since the middle of the night. On the surface, this might not sound like a big deal, but it was to Howard, since all the food his mother had left in the freezer was going to go bad. It's all defrosting. It's okay, it's just food. It's not just food. This is the last food my mother ever made. This, and his choice to organize a dinner, was portrayed in a heart-wrenchingly real way. Let's invite everyone over to dinner. I'll be like Ma's feeding us one last time. Dad. Number seven, Penny breaks up with Leonard. I think we should talk now. Well, uh, no, it's okay. We don't have to talk because there's nothing to talk about. But everything's good. Yes, they've had their ups and downs, almost breakups and so on. And they were sad every time. But this is the one that hurt the most. It all began when Leonard told Penny he loved her for the first time and Penny didn't return the sentiment. I love you, Penny. <laughs> Thank 
Thank you. This is a tipping point moment in any relationship, and it was in this one as well. Leonard tried to play it cool and understanding about them being at different places in the relationship, but he wasn't, and he couldn't stop pressuring Penny about the unreturned L-bomb. Someday we don't know when, maybe you'll love me back. Finally, with a little evil genius coaxing from Will Wheaton, she dropped the breakup bomb on Leonard, breaking his heart and ours. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. No, this isn't fair to you, Leonard. I'm sorry. Number six, Stuart's comic book store burns down. At the beginning of the series, Stuart went on a couple of dates with Penny, and in the final season, he falls in love with a great girl and they move in together. But in between those high points, Stuart had a whole lot of lows, and no moment was lower or sadder than when his comic book store burned down. What happened? I was cooking in the back room last night and the hot plate caught on fire. For a guy who already seemed to be having a tough time with life, seeing his business destroyed felt like life really was picking on him. I don't mean to be rude, Sheldon, but uh, my life is kind of falling apart right now. The studio audience's shocked and saddened reaction to the destruction is the perfect sonic representation of what we all felt in that moment. Number five, Sheldon is a selfish jerk. You are a selfish jerk. To hell with you and your Nobel Prize. Sheldon being selfish and inconsiderate was the source of much of the comedy of the show, but his selfishness hit a high point in the series finale, and it wasn't funny. You just found out that a woman who has loved and cared for you for 12 years is pregnant, and all you can say is you're relieved that she's not going to get you sick. There's no need for a recap, I was there. The gang all went to Sweden to celebrate Sheldon and Amy winning the Nobel Prize. But before they got to the ceremony, Sheldon managed to selfishly piss off every one of his friends. So much so that they all considered leaving. Well, pull it together, this is a big day for me. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I wasn't sure what to do. Now I am. We're going home. The saddest moment came when Amy had to call him out and tell him that the reasons their friends were abandoning them was because he broke their hearts. They're abandoning us because you broke their hearts. I didn't mean to. I know. You never mean to. It's the only reason people tolerate you. Number four, Professor Proton dies. Sheldon, I, I've got some bad news. What is it? I just read online that Arthur Jeffries passed away. Professor Proton was the host of a science show for kids back when Sheldon and Leonard were growing up. His importance to Sheldon during his younger, friendless years can't be overstated. You okay? I know he meant a lot to you. I'm fine. The guys become somewhat friendly with him at the end of season six. But near the end of the seventh season, Professor Proton passed away. And now you're gone too? It's like all the men I've looked up to have gone away. At first, Sheldon acts like it doesn't affect him, not going to the funeral and focusing instead on Star Wars Day. But when Leonard returns from the funeral, Sheldon can't deny it anymore. Did you know that Arthur's son is a high school son? The pain and sadness that he's been trying to ignore comes out in a moment of heartache that anyone who has lost someone important to them can relate to. Number three, Leonard forgives his mother. Leonard's relationship, or lack thereof, with his mother was a source of many jokes throughout the run of the series. Have you calmed down? No, I'm not calm. You really hurt me. That wasn't my intention. It doesn't matter what you intended. What matters is the way you made me feel. Actually, the way you've always made me feel. He's constantly looking for love, approval, and an emotional connection from his mother that never comes. Although, in one of the final episodes, things seem to have changed until Leonard realizes she was just doing it to gather information for a new book. This has all been work to you? Hanging out with me and coming to my lab? I thought we were enjoying each other's company, but it was just research. And that's when he, instead of trying to change his mother, decides to forgive her. It's a truly powerful moment, and as he speaks, you can see an emotional weight being lifted off his shoulders. I didn't ask you to forgive Too me. bad. I forgive you anyway. <laughs> and I forgive myself for taking so long to do it. 
Oh my god, that feels so good. The scene ends with his mother giving him a hug, a real hug, quite possibly for the first time ever. Number two, Amy breaks up with Sheldon. Can you believe it's been five years since our first date? I know. Do you think I should start watching the Flash TV show? As patient and understanding as Raj was with Lucy, Amy was ten times that when it came to her relationship with Sheldon, and there was no doubting that they both truly did love each other, which made their breakup that much sadder. This isn't easy to say because I love you, but I need some time to take a step back and reevaluate our situation. This wasn't something Amy wanted to do or was happy to do. It was something that she needed to do, even though it was hurting her as much as Sheldon. I hope you understand. Okay. Bye, Sheldon. And as if that wasn't sad enough, this moment turns the sadness meter up to 11 when we found out that Sheldon had a ring and was planning on proposing to Amy before she ended things. Well, Gollum, you're an expert on rings. What do I do with this one? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Howard's mother dies. Yeah, you okay? No. What's wrong? My mom died. For eight seasons, Howard's mother was just a loud, screeching voice coming from off screen. We never saw her face, but she was as important as almost anyone on the show. It's this dress! When I put my front in, my back pops out! After his father left when he was a young boy, Howard and his mum only had each other. Howard would make jokes about her dying, but there was never any doubt about how much he loved her. And so did we. This heartbreaking story was written in after Carol Ann Susie, who plays Mrs. Wolowitz, passed away. So it was as much a gut punch for the actors as for the characters. That was my aunt. Ma took a nap. She never woke up. <laughs> if you didn't shed a tear at any of the other moments on this list, there is no way your eyes stayed dry for this episode. It's Mrs. Wolowitz. Uh, loving mother to all of us. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.